Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here, and it's time for something of a special blind commentary video for today. I'm going to be reacting to a song, which is something that I don't normally do. Uh, I think I've done it like maybe two other times with some uh, MLP fan songs that people really want to see me react to. But generally speaking, I don't feel like pure music without any kind of visual component to go along with it is something that is especially reaction worthy. Though, I'm thinking this song before me right now is going to be something of an exception. Yeah. <laughs> the song that I'm looking at is called BMBLB, and it is off of the Ruby Volume 4 soundtrack. And, uh, yeah, which if you were wondering, the Ruby Volume 4 soundtrack isn't actually out yet. It comes out on the 16th, but you can pre-order the soundtrack on iTunes or Amazon or wherever. And on, on iTunes, there are several songs that are already available for purchase, which is where I got this. Uh, and those songs are this song, uh, Let's Just Live, the full version, uh, the full version of Bad Luck Charm, and the full version of This Life is Mine. So that's all really exciting stuff, and uh, yeah, you should totally go check it all out and pre-order the album, uh, because Ruby Music is awesome. This actually came at just the perfect time for me, because I've been really into Ruby the past few weeks, just really getting into it again. Uh, well, it was never not into it since I first watched it, but... Uh, like a week before Chibi started, I got like really into watching reaction videos again and just obsessing over it and just thinking about it constantly. And <laughs> and uh, for the first time, I'm really, really getting into the music. And uh, that's because, I mean, before, uh, it wasn't really my thing, I didn't feel like. Uh, I mean, I never disliked it, but just this sort of uh, pop metal, it, it doesn't really... It's, it's not really what I would normally listen to exactly, uh, but I think once I started figure out, figuring out what the lyrics were, I started really warming to it because there's a lot of thought put into them and even some interesting details that uh, kind of hint at things to come, and it's all really interesting. And uh, <laughs> the problem there is that the lyrics aren't always clear the first time I hear them. I love Casey's voice. I think it's beautiful. But her diction isn't really her strongest suit. I can't always make out what she's saying, and uh, <laughs> that kind of hurts the songs a little. But once I do understand the lyrics, then I become really attached to them, and I'm really loving the, the Ruby music right now. And now, <laughs> we got this song. <laughs> and I have been so excited since I knew that this was going to be a thing. Uh, this song is called BMBLB, and if you're slow on the uptake, that's Bumblebee without the vowels in, so this is probably going to be a Bumblebee-related song. A song about the relationship between Blake and Yang. Uh, and uh, I suppose it could be about the motorcycle, but I think uh, that's a pretty sure way for Jeff Williams to piss off everyone. Uh, well, uh, or well, most people, but... Uh, I guess some people are going to be pissed off just that this exists, but, uh, who cares about them? <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm really hoping that this is a full-on Bumblebee ship song that is just indisputably romantic, just so we can, uh, kind of have that. So that there's no more arguing that there aren't any songs that support Bumblebee, while well, there are, like, two or three or whatever that support Black Sun, which... I think that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, uh, there's that one on the Volume 3 soundtrack that does, but it's all one-sided, obviously. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like Morning Follows Night isn't even that shippy. It's really just restating the events of that episode. And, uh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I would love to have a Bumblebee song to point at and just sort of... It would just make so many <laughs> YouTube comment debates so much easier uh, just to have something that is solid evidence that all us Bumblebee shippers are not crazy. <laughs> it's there. It really is. And, uh, yeah. There is a lot to support it. And I still kind of feel like making a whole video just to... Uh, make my case about Bumblebee. Though now that this is out, maybe I won't have to. Maybe the case is being made already for me. Uh, I'm eager to find out, so let's 
quit stalling and just get to it. Uh, while the song plays, I'm probably just gonna leave the Bumblebee fan art that you're seeing up, since, I mean, there's no real need to switch to anything else. So, this, this video might look a bit different, you're probably just gonna be looking at the same image the whole time, but you'll hear my reaction to the song as it plays, and, uh, yeah. Hopefully, it's fun. Hopefully there's lots of <laughs> fanish squealings and just, I don't know what, I really don't know what sounds I'm going to be making, but hopefully they're entertaining ones. <laughs> so yeah, let's just go ahead and get this started. Okay, and here we go. There's a garden where I go. If you meet me there, no one will know. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm down for this so far. <laughs> Pretty suggestive. Secret romance. <laughs> Aren't we all? Happy as we see it grow. Yeah, this is undeniably romantic. Baby, can't you see? You could be with me. We could live inside a garden of ecstasy. Oh, garden of ecstasy. You could be my queen, so it's also obviously a girl she's singing to. Let me be your bumblebee. Sweet. I also love this song, by the way. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> be your dream. <laughs> this is amazing. Back to the hive. <laughs> wow. That guitar solo, that's pretty awesome. Yes, 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 yes. It is canon. Yes. So, yeah, I just listened to this like 10 more times because I had to. <laughs> and uh, I gotta say that even disregarding the theme, this is possibly my favorite Ruby song ever. I just really, really love the feel of it. It's so cheerful and just bouncy and just so smitten and in love it's just a perfect little pop rock love song and uh it sounds great the lyrics are so catchy and it's just so much fun and uh just infectious it's really a beautiful composition and I, jeff williams outdid himself and casey just sings it so well and uh i can't get enough of it and i'm gonna be listening to it for like uh 
the next several weeks probably uh, this will probably be on repeat until the rest of the soundtrack comes out at which point I'll incorporate the others I guess but uh, this one just is really special this is an amazing amazing uh, composition and I can't wait to see it actually incorporated in Ruby I really want to see this show up as they always do as like a background melody for a scene with Yang and Blake and uh I just it's just so great and uh, that's not even getting into the subject matter which really really makes me happy this is undeniably a pure romance song probably the purest we've ever had I mean well the pure ones I guess but even those they were unrequited uh, both shine and uh, I forget what the other one is called uh, but I really like it. I can't. I don't know why I can't remember it at the moment. Uh, yeah, you know, the one where she goes after Weiss a bit. That's a great song. But uh, <laughs> even they were a bit more unrequited than this was. This was well, it's kind of. You could be my bumblebee. There's that could in there. Uh, but uh, yeah, it also kind of suggests that it's somewhat mutual. Uh, there's the line about our love growing, they watch our love grow, and uh, if there isn't any mutual love there, that's kind of a weird line. Uh, and there are other little things in that that suggest that there is something on both sides here. And uh, that's the really interesting thing is, honestly, and I'm completely surprised by this, this feels, to me more like it's Blake singing about Yang than the other way around. Uh, it's not really clear either way. Uh, sadly, the bad part about this is there isn't too much to directly tether it to the context of Ruby. Uh, it is clearly a song sung from a, p a female perspective. Casey singing it to a female with the line about uh, you could be my queen. But... Uh, yeah, there isn't much to really tie it directly to Yang and Blake other than it's called Bumblebee and that's their combination name. So that is something at least. But uh, yeah, with all the talk about chasing away her doubts, chasing away her uh, yeah, her uh, her gloom, her sadness, uh, that's more the role that Yang takes in the relationship. That's what Yang does. She comforts, she assures, and um, yeah, all the other stuff about drinking in her smile and how oh, so sh how oh so sweet she is, it really just fits Yang a little more, I think. So um, it's surprising because it is a lot easier watching Ruby to build a case that Yang is in love with Blake than the other way around, though there are still hints, I think. I think there are at least a few hints that it does go both ways. And, uh, yeah, the way, it could still be Yang to Blake. It could still, because she is really just clearly smitten, and that is what this song really conveys. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's interesting. I, I was thinking it'd be more clear that it was one to the other, but it's, it's really not. And, of course, there's also the possibility that it is both of them, that the different verses are sung by different ones and this is a duet but uh casey's singing both parts so we don't really know <laughs> but uh yeah it's interesting and uh yeah the bad part is that there isn't much to tie it directly to ruby though there is one line that does kind of intrigue me and that's about uh yeah the the birds and the butterflies uh watching this secret love grow uh <laughs> Which is kind of interesting because I think Weiss is somewhat associated with butterflies. Uh, she had that scene with the caterpillar in it. And uh, there's just sort of this connection, I think, there. Uh, of her just sort of being contained. And uh, waiting for her chance to blossom up into like a butterfly. Uh, there is sort of a symbolic connection, I feel, to an extent. And of course, Ruby was taught by Crow and... So there's sort of a bird thing with her, I guess, uh, at least to some extent. So that could be a slight 
reference to their friends there. Uh, otherwise, it's a weird line. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this line about being watched as this love grows uh, and them being happy. because uh, And I don't know who else it could refer to because, I mean, can't really think of any character more directly tied to butterflies and, well, I don't really see... <laughs> Raven being too happy about uh, seeing Yang and Blake develop a relationship because, uh, well, I don't think she'd be unhappy, but I just don't think she'd care. Uh, and Crow, well, uh, yeah, I don't really think he'd have too strong an opinion about it either. I mean, he'd probably be pretty happy, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> just, uh, but... Yeah, I, there aren't really any other lines that really say too much that could be symbolic of anything, uh, but the lyrics are still great. They're just beautiful and love-struck and just so much fun, and I love this song. I really, really love this song, and uh, <laughs> it is exactly what I could wish for. It's completely unambiguous. This is a love song. It's, yeah, there's even a line about kissing, uh, your kiss fills me with bliss, or whatever it was. Uh, and this is a very romantic, very suggestive love song. Uh, anyone who wants to say it's platonic after this, they're going to have a stronger, they're going to have a harder time building a case. Because this is pretty, uh, <laughs> this is pretty definitive. Uh, they're probably going to have to argue that this has nothing to do with Ruby, which is going to be a hard case to make because it's on the Ruby soundtrack. And uh, I think that's a pretty good sign that, uh, yeah, this is something that came from somewhere. <laughs> and I think, if, I, I, I think Jeff would have to, like, I, I think... Yeah, he has to check and make sure that he can do these things with the soundtracks and that he can put songs on there. Uh, and putting something on the soundtrack that doesn't have anything to do with the direction they're taking things, uh, I don't think that would be allowed. So, yeah, this has to have meaning. This has to relate to the characters. And if it does, then this is pretty undeniably proof that this is a real thing and that this is happening as Nora would say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just so happy. This put me in such a good mood. And uh, truth was, I wasn't even a recording thing tonight. I was not really in the mood for reactions, but I saw this was out, and I had to. I had to react to this. Uh, and I decided to react to a couple other things while I was at it. But, uh... <laughs> So glad about this, and I can't wait for the rest of the soundtrack. I only bought this song. Uh, I, I'm waiting for the full thing to come out before I get to the other ones. Uh, and once it does come out, I think I might review the whole soundtrack. Uh, maybe not like a fully structured review, but maybe just more of a sort of ramble like I did for uh, my Star vs. Afterthoughts video. Just something loosely structured uh, where I talk about it a bit. I don't know. Tell me if you'd be interested in that. I do. I'm getting into the Ruby songs, and I would like to... I, I think I might have something to say about the ones that are on there. Uh, and, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. This was great. This was amazing. And I think I've been talking about this for ten minutes now, which is crazy that I have uh, ten minutes <laughs> that I can talk about a three minute song for ten minutes and I talked about it for like five minutes before the video so that just shows how much I love this ship and how happy I am that this happened and uh, I can't wait until these two meet up again in Ruby it needs to happen volume five it really needs to happen we really need to get all these hard feelings out of there and get these two back to where they can <laughs> go to their secret garden and uh, yeah <laughs> be bumblebees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, hope you liked the commentary of them if you did, and see you in the next one.